Welcome to Power Charting. I am your host, Bruce Frazier. Today, we are going to talk about Wyckoff, the thoroughly modern methodology. Uh, big thank you to the International Federation of Technical Analysts and the American Association of Professional Technical Analysts, of which uh, I'm a member, has uh, had invited me to speak at their worldwide fall virtual conference, which uh, I spoke at last week. And I'd like to share with you the uh, high points of the presentation and uh, share with you some of the, uh, I think, really innovate, really interesting innovations that we have seen and talked a little bit about here on power charting. Uh, but we will do more of this over time. And this is three modernizations that uh, I believe have happened because of really technology. And uh, Mr. Wyckoff, I believe, would have embraced these um, aspects to his methodology if he had had the technology in his day. So uh, these uh, three areas are uh, relative strength, percent scaling, and scanning. And so uh, we will start with that in a minute, but I'd like to start with a big tip of the hat to Julius de Kempenauer, one of the uh, uh, fine uh, members of the uh, Stock Charts platform. He does blogging. He does um, a, a very fine video program called Sector Spotlight. He just completed his 100th episode of Sector Spotlight. And to, to get to the uh, program, just go to Stock Charts, click on it, and then scroll down and you'll see the uh, Sector Spotlight tile, which looks just like this, uh, underneath the screen that you see here. And you will be able to click on that and have access to uh, really all of Julius's programs. But I'd like to also point out that Julius had a very special guest for his 100th episode, and that is Tom Dorsey. Tom Dorsey, I believe to be one of the great point and figure innovators of this generation. He has done an exceptional job of bringing point and figure into uh, relative strength analysis, into um, uh, uh, sector analysis, industry group analysis, and then also searching and scanning for great ideas using point and figure. The methodology is a little different from the traditional Wyckoffian horizontal counting methodology, but still equally as powerful, very important, and uh, a great addition to anybody's uh, analysis program using point and figure. So go check that out. And then also go to the bookstore and get Tom Dorsey's book because, and I'm talking about the Stock Charts bookstore, because his book is exceptional and it's a must read, I think, for anybody who's a serious technician. Congratulations, Julius. Thank you, Tom, for being his guest. And I think you're really going to love that show. Okay, let's get started. So uh, give me a, a second. We're going to pause and I'll be right back. Can't have a power charting episode without at least a brief look at the uh, current state of the markets. Uh, the markets are having a really good day today. This is Thursday, Thursday morning. So we're not quite through the trading day. Here is the NASDAQ comp 10 minute point and figure chart using ATR scaling here and uh, also three box reversal. And this is a count that I've taken somewhat of a conservative count from what I think is the last point of support really down to the uh, this important test, this sets up the range of trading in uh, this uh, index and the NASDAQ comp, which we all know is very, very important, gives us a, a count that gets us uh, uh, back into a rally mode or gets us back towards the old highs. So again, this is just 10 minute uh, analysis of the uh, point figure and it gives us 1,360 points of upside potential. I simply counted from the low. Here it gets us up to 15,559. And so uh, that's encouraging, but there are things happening here underneath the surface that I think we should just take a quick look at. 
And this is the NASDAQ comp with the NASDAQ advanced decline oscillator. This is a two hour chart. So you're seeing quite a bit of history. We just did the point and figure analysis on this area right here. If this rally phase can get up into this zone and uh, potentially have some kind of a pause or pullback, there could be a larger count available to us out here in the future. So here we are, this is uh, trading through this morning right here and you can see where we are at this time. And uh, oops, uh, I was gonna see if I could uh, potentially erase this and um, give you a better look there. Now, what I'd like to point out, and I've talked about this in the past, is notice the in the oscillator that on the uh, low here in uh, the week of September 20th, you can see that this was the internal low in this oscillator. Now, as this decline went into the beginning of October, we have a higher low. And so this higher low is a form of a divergence. So we have a deep low here oversold, higher low divergence here, and then a higher low here and here. And so this has a nice upward trend to it. On this pullback, there was a uh, very uh, shallow pullback, went down about halfway of this rally phase. Again, another higher low, and this has already started walking uphill uh, as the uh, NASDAQ comp was going down into its uh, final reaction here. And now it's starting to turn up. And so what is the potential here? Uh, just looking at this, we just saw that it gets us back to above this uh, 15,400 area and uh, gets us to a uh, potentially minor new high. So you can see here's the high. I know that all you white coffeeans uh, drew in this uh, trend channel and this goes back to the March low and the May low, and then the intervening high. This is a normal use of trend lines. This is the demand line. We draw that extended out. Look how beautifully it went down and touched that area right here. And also look at the support. So two forms of support here, the trend line and this low made in mid-July. And so a rally up into an overbought condition, which gets it back to the top of the uptrending channel, and then a decline. This decline came down. You can see that the high volume, there was high volume here, that was uh, mostly supply with a gap. High volume here, this actually had some de good demand in it because this high volume into these two areas of support then was reversed upward and now this is through today. And uh, you can see, well, this morning, it's not the close, but you can see it's attempting to get out of this area right here and then rally back up. There's the 1559, which is uh, uh, the target of that point figure just above this area here. Relative strength, very important. You can see that the internal low of relative strength, meaning the lowest low was made in the second week of May. And this was on this decline here. And thereafter it, it rallied up. Well, this rally, which produced a high, a higher low, and then another slightly higher high into the September peak. This is against the S&P 500, which shows that the NASDAQ comp is uh, re-extending uh, leadership characteristics here after a pretty sharp decline from February to May. So uh, is it possible that this could reassert its uptrend? Well, uh, I think that there's a case here to be made for the potential for a pretty good rally. Now, turning our attention to the Dow Industrials, you can see here that the Dow Industrials uh, did form a count in this area. Now, this is a five minute point figure chart, three box reversal and ATR scaling, which is 33.04 points. So each one of these, and you can see this count goes up to 37,070. And this is uh, currently pivoting off of this level right here, 34, uh, 
377, and that was as of yesterday. So pretty good rally going. This blue arrow represents where the Dow is today. And I would point out that we could potentially take account that would go across this last point of support uh, type structure down to this low here, uh, which was in early September. So uh, and that's this area from here over to here. This is 15 minute chart, uh, one point reversal, one box reversal. The other thing I wanna point out about the Dow is there's a lot of talk about this being distribution. And it was uh, very uh, possible, you can see this goes back literally to April, April, May, where this top began to form. But notice that these lows through here are higher lows. And so this is the area that we're just looking at and starting to count. But this area of higher lows through here uh, is constructive for a continuation of the upward trend. Now, what would have to happen, and it still could happen in the future, is a breakdown of these lows and this low into a sign of weakness, which may produce another rally. And so this is a, uh, but it, currently, this is showing signs of wanting to make higher lows and turn up. Okay, so here is the Dow, and this is a very long-term chart back to 2009. You can see it's still hovering. This is through yesterday, hovering above this upper reverse use of trend lines, and it's hanging out there. And I believe that it could be good support in this area, and then a rally could happen off of that. So we'll keep tuned up, tuned in for that. Here's the technology select sector, which uh, I think is really important because I think technology is uh, really what gets the uh, speculative juices going among traders. And when the technology sector is acting well, I think it's generally a good foundation for the whole market. And so I've given you three different looks here. And this uh, look here on the top left is five minute bar charts. And so these are five minute bars, but look at the structure. The structure is beautiful. And so you can see here, there's a selling climax. Here's the internal selling low here. This is just a few days ago. And so then a rally, and this really points out that Wyckoff is totally fractal. And then you have a sharp automatic rally. This sets up the range of trading. Here's a secondary test, and here's a uh, breaking of that area, and then a very sharp reversal into an upthrust. This decline here takes a very long time and suggests that there could be some good absorption taking place uh, in the XLK as it's going down. And so a spring and a test, we're going to call this, and then a rally, which gets above these peaks, we call this a minor sign of strength, and a last point of support, which sets up the conditions for a good rally. This is These are the areas where we start to get busy with uh, trade entry is uh, on these uh, final tests of the low and into uh, the uh, jump, and then a huge gap here has occurred in the XLK. So this is a 30-minute chart here. And this shaded area is what we just looked at. And you can see that there's a much bigger structure at work. And so we're going to take a crack at counting that uh, on a larger time frame. And again, 30 minute bars. And so uh, selling climax, high volume, automatic rally, range bound condition, attempt to, a sign of strength that pulls back into a last point of support classic. And now uh, a gap and a jump back out, I think, Potentially, this could be the beginning of a more important rally in technology, which could be really good for uh, speculative uh, juices. This is a point and figure count, one box reversal, ATR scaling across this area here, and 26 columns. And this gives us a count up to 161.12 from a low of 147.34. And so uh, you can see down here that uh, this is a count that gets us back up towards uh, a minor new high in this, or just above this area. And also here's a uh, very good trend channel, two lows, uh, intervening high, draw the parallel, overbought above that line there, this is daily uh, chart and down it came, but it did not get back down to the demand line 
before it started to turn back up, which is, I think, inherently bullish. Also, notice all the volume came in. It came in right on the low. The market turned up from that. That suggests that there's really good demand in uh, these uh, volume bars into this low area here. And so this count, 26 columns, uh, potentially we could take it out further. Uh, given uh, more trading, it could rally up and then come back and we could get a bigger count even than what we see here. So this is sort of preliminary and uh, this is a, a, a pretty good high from here. And finally, I wanna show you two bullish percents. This one on the left is the energy sector, which went from below 15% of stocks in the sector being on bullish percent buy signals to where literally the whole sector the whole index, the whole sector, 100% of stocks are on a buy. So this is an incredible momentum surge in the energy sector. And you can see that the market, the index itself of this sector, XLE has moved up quite nicely with that. Look at this beautiful accumulation type structure here. Possibly this whole area is a countable structure. And we'll come back to that at a later episode. Here is the materials. And so the materials sector bullish percent, and you can see that this made a double bottom down here uh, around 35% and started to turn up. It's back in the area of 68% uh, right now. It's pointed up looks like a big accumulation type structure, coincides with the sector XLB, and it is starting to really rally here. So these are some interesting signs of rotation in the uh, sector analysis, and uh, you can see it in the bullish percent. Okay, uh, I will be right back. Wyckoff modernization concept number one, relative strength structural analysis, relative strength point and figure technique. Now we're gonna breeze through these pretty quickly and uh, know that uh, unlike the prior presentation that I did, that we can really just drill in, dig into these concepts in power charting in future episodes. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. I've been working on these for a while. Some of them you've seen. And so uh, you have familiarity with the concept. And so uh, let's start with a chart of Albemarle and this is a um, chemical company, lithium producer. And you can see down here in these uh, green shaded uh, boxes that there is a structure of sorts uh, in these, uh, rel this is relative strength down here to the S&P. And you can see that there is a Wyckoffian type accumulation structure that has formed in this uh, uh, relative strength line and the yellow shaded areas of the weekly of ALB is the area that we're evaluating. Now, my contention is, is that sometimes you can see in relative strength structures and setups that you can't easily see in price. And so uh, in this case, we are going to uh, just take a look at this. We're gonna do a point and figure chart of the relative strength. And this is something that Tom Dorsey has done some great work on. But what we're gonna do that's different is we're doing structural analysis and we are doing point and figure horizontal counting. And so here you can see in this area, you can see a small count in blue. And this area here counts up to this 41 to 46. This is not the price of the stock. This represents the uh, relative strength ratio number and this number is somewhat arbitrary. It's just dividing the stock price by the index, but, and then rounding up to make it a whole number. But the, uh, the approach is really powerful because it gives us a way not just to see that we have rising relative strength, very important to us because that shows that we have a relative outperformance of our asset to the S&P. Very important to institutional portfolio managers, very important to white coffeeans. And so here, look at how beautifully this went up and counted this intermediate structure. This is a climactic surge with a very large reaction. 
And that reaction shows that this point figure count was valid, worked really well, and then set up the beginning of a more important reaccumulation. Now, you know, it's not more important, but this is the area here. And this uh, other reaccumulation, which I counted very conservatively, goes 56 to 59. And this larger count here, which we also counted, uh, took us into the same stepping stone confirming count. And so we have now two counts that both go into this area and notice how in the case, this is the uh, first stopping point down here. This is the second stopping point up here. And so this has in fact gone exactly to the 56 level and uh, has had an important reaction after that, which shows that this point figure count is relevant and valid. And so it gives us a way to be able to identify how far relative strength can go in its upward performance before it needs to either go into a reaccumulation structure or it needs to go into distribution or it will go into distribution. You can see distribution right here in uh, this uh, uh, lower uh, chart. And so uh, we, it's really too early to tell at this point, but you can see that there's a range bound condition in the relative strength. And you can see that in here. So uh, there is the idea. Now this is Intellia Therapeutics. Intellia, here is the relative strength structure down here. And this is the uh, uh, price structure. You can see they're very, very similar. That is not always the case between relative strength and price, but often is. And so here we can see there's a selling climax and then a secondary test, a sign of strength that shows that there's a desire by relative strength to become stronger, pulls back to the midpoint, which we call the LPS, which is a higher low off this low in uh, 2019, very large structure, and then a backup, which is very shallow, dull, and then sets up an important rally. Now, Intellia, this is a stock that I uh, <clears throat> campaigned down in this area here, and so, and uh, still do own some, is uh, had a very, very dramatic advance. And so it went upwards of $200 from being in the teens. Now, how in the world can we possibly get a grasp on the potential for how far a stock can go other than do point and figure analysis. And in this case, we're doing point and figure analysis uh, uh, on the relative strength here to the S&P 500 of Intellia. And so here's the base that we just looked at on the relative strength structure down here. And then this is the reaccumulation area here. This base, relative strength base, gave us a count up to uh, 1770 to 1940, which again was the ratio of the relative strength. This is this area right in here. So it goes from the teens up to uh, around $90, reconsolidates a reaccumulation for another run up. Here is the relative strength reaccumulation here. And you can see buying climax automatic reaction at the final high. And I don't know that that's the final high for the stock, but for the time being. Now, we get into this area and this sets up a reaccumulation. Very important because we've seen this go from the, the four area on relative strength up to nearly 20, 19.40. And it does in fact go over 20 here temporarily. And so that's a significant relative strength advance, which would be very important to institutional money managers. <clears throat> now, here is the reaccumulation, this area in here. And this is uh, counted where this time we're doing one box and uh, traditional, uh, no, we're doing 50 cents scaling. And so here you can see the math and it goes up from an area of around a count line of 18 and it goes up to 45. So that's a very significant relative strength advance. And this coincides with, and look at how ver it's just a virtual launch and see how this coincides with the price advance very dramatic, goes up to $200 on the stock price, and then goes has a very sharp reaction and goes into a range-bound condition 
Possibly this is near the low. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, Intellia has had a dramatic buying climax here. So uh, really just a dramatic case study on uh, relative strength analysis and how you can use it for point and figure. Now, this is a uh, FDN, and this was an example of how you might use relative strength for distribution analysis. And I'll just leave this with you. This is the internet index. You can see that at the beginning of 2020, there was a climactic blow off of sorts here at the beginning of the year, early in the year. And then there was an upthrusting action in price unconfirmed by the relative strength. So now we have potentially a distribution type structure in white coffee in terms. And here is the analysis of that area over on the right. So you can see all the elements of distribution forming. Now, this may be a reaccumulation area, but so far it has yet to show the ability to have relative strength uh, recovery. Mo modernization concept number two, and uh, we'll introduce this today and come back to it next week. But uh, this is a really interesting chart. This is the S&P 500. I've shown you this chart before, but I really only showed it to you with this area right here counted. And uh, you can see acceleration, a trend channel throws over the top and into the count area and has stalled. So this may mean one of two things. It may mean that it has to reconsolidate for another move up or it may set up distribution to go down. We'll see. But uh, this uh, currently is an arising uh, climactic type advance. So uh, these can go on and on. And uh, so we will have to just see what happens and let the market tell us when it's finally getting tired. But look at these counts going back to 2011. This is one box method and 3% scaling. You can only do percent scaling when you have a computer. And then you really need to be able to do compounding if your counts go outside of the range of the chart. And so here you can count across 15 columns and count up 15 columns from the low and the count line and get a count. But if it goes over the top of the, uh, the range area, you need to be able to calculate the um, percent scaling because it is a compounding event. So here's the second range bound condition. Look, this goes from 2014 to 2016, gives us a count. Look how beautifully this gets us up into this area right here. And so this count here counts also up to that. These confirm each other. And then you have the big 21 column count that goes from the 2018 low late in the year to the uh, really the test of the, the March 2020 low, and then the uh, really great uptrend that we've been in. And so you can see here that uh, percent scaling is really good for very large structures. Uh, I'll show you one more today and we'll come back to this, but this, and I only have 45 seconds, but percent scaling on the NASDAQ 100, this is really large, 5% scaling, three box method. I count 19 columns from the last point of support to the low right here. This is the uh, in uh, 2002. And so 2002 is uh, the low here. Uh, and then you have uh, in 2009, this is the low of the uh, bear market that took place back here. Beautiful downtrending channel. I'll show you more about this next time. But anyway, you can see this count and we're getting into the zone now of the count that was created off of the very important low. And with that, I will say goodbye. Thank you for being here and we'll see you next time.